Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, AKG133. I'm back here with another video on the channel for y'all today. And today we're going to be talking about My Hero Academia. I haven't forgot about my My Hero Academia people. I've been keeping up with the manga, of course. And you guys will eventually get those season five reactions. I have been doing them, you know, in secret. I'm just figuring out a time to actually upload them. But we're going to be focusing on the manga today, specifically with chapter three. 326 so the manga was actually on break this past week because the creator was sick you know i don't know if he had COVID or anything like that but he wasn't able to get the chapter out on time so it wasn't a planned break for the series but you know these things happen right so uh there was no my hero academia chapter last week but we're back with the normal scheduled chapter this week so chapter 326 picks up where we left off in the story deku has returned to ua the civilians have let him in after ochako's uh, amazing uh, speech and we saw at the end of that chapter we saw all might but All Might was outside of UA. It's kind of like he was ashamed to go in. And you guys remember, we hadn't seen All Might in a little bit. Because the last time we had seen him, Deku had, pre had told All Might, you know, uh, don't worry about me. And All Might couldn't bring himself to actually stop Deku from leaving. So All Might's now kind of, you know, having this crisis. He can't speak to the guy he's supposed to be training, right? You know, his disciple in a way. And, you know, he's on his own. So basically, let's get into the chapter. Let's not waste any time. So this chapter is called Who Are You, right? And it begins with All Might. He's in his car and he's you know remembering the last conversation he had with deku you know the conversation that like i just said where deku basically told all might not to worry about himself and we saw them point part ways in a way right and it was a very emotional chapter very sad and i remember saying that you know this could be the moment that deku regrets and that could eventually lead to you know all my tragic passing because i feel and i hate saying that but i just feel like especially for deku's character development eventually at some point even though all might doesn't have his quirk no more at some point all might may have to pass away or sacrifice himself for deku to you know reach that next level in his development and i, I like i said i hope we never get to that point but you know I, I that chapter and even though it was months ago that chapter really left me with like damn deku could go deku could really regret doing this in the future so all Might's driving in his car and he's remembering that conversation and he goes to Kamino. You guys know Kamino has a lot of history with this show. This is where Deku vs. Class A took place a couple chapters back. And we see a part of Deku's mask lying on the ground. He also then looks at the statue of him doing the fist in the air and he remembers a talk he had with Izawa right before the war arc began. And Izawa said that just by being alive, he's already helping so many people. But then All Might's thinking to himself that he can't do anything for his suffering disciple and that he's just holding everyone back. So you can see there's an identity crisis being, you know, pushed here, right? He's always told All Might, you being alive, even though you don't have your quirk anymore, you being alive, you know, helps so many people because, you know, people just by seeing you, you know, walking on the street, they remember all the good things you did as the number one hero. Your smile, your perseverance, your strength, right? Your, your ability to inspire others. So many of those qualities that made All Might so great. But now All Might's like, okay, I'm alive, but... I don't have my quirk anymore and I can't help Deku and he, you know he's seeing how much Deku is suffering with the burden of one for all and in dealing with the League of Villains and All Might is thinking to himself like yeah I'm alive but what's my point of being here you know my hope my my path you know even though my story as the number one hero has ended you know I'm supposed to be helping Deku with his path and I can't do anything for him. And he feels like he's just holding everyone back, you know, from reaching that next level. So then we see Stain appears. And this is something a lot of fans have been waiting for for a long time. So Stain appears and he points his sword at All Might, saying that these words are an insult to a great hero, right? 
All Might recognized and say, uh, All Might recognizes Stain and says that he couldn't talk to him, you know, at the uh, Tartarus, the prison, of course, right? But Stain doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, Stain doesn't recognize who All Might is. And then All Might then thinks to himself he must not know about his thin form, and then he introduces himself. Because we know that All Might can go buff still, but he can only, you know, remain in that form for a very small amount of time. Stain says that he is lying. Right, oh my! Tr so uh, after all my transform, Stain continues to doubt him. He said that he's an imposter and asks why he came to the holy land of a hero to lie and dirty his name. All Might then says that maybe he was always lying, that he created an image for himself because he couldn't stand to see the injustices around him anymore. He says that the current state of the country totally destroyed is the end result of his efforts. So All Might's having this eternal crisis, right? He sees what's going on with his relationship with Deku. He sees what's going on with Japan and everything that's happened, right? Everything being destroyed because of the war and, you know, the damage caused by the League of Villains and Shigaraki and everything. And All Might's, you know, taking blame for a lot of it. He feels like, you know, All Might knows he did a lot of good during his time, but he feels like, you know, the, the way everything is now is also his fault. And Stain... You know, it's not that Stain doesn't recognize All Might from a physical. He knows that's All Might in front of him. But he says the way All Might is acting, that's not, you know, the All Might that he admired for all those years. You know, All Might's smile, All Might's presence. When All Might was the number one hero, whenever he was around people, you know, people thought no matter how bad the situation was, everything was going to be all right because All Might was there, right? All Might said it all the time. I am here. You know, and now All Might's right here in front of Stain, and he doesn't feel that. And it's not because he doesn't have his quirk, it's because he's totally a different person than everything he used to stand up for. So, uh, All Might says that even though he put his life on the line, he couldn't help his disciple, and after that, he didn't even have the courage to talk to him at UA. He remembers the scene of the civilians handing the umbrellas to the student. And like I said, remember, All Might was outside. He heard the speech Ochako gave. He knew what happened, but he didn't have the courage to walk in and say anything. You know, especially a lot of that had to do with the conversation he had with Deku prior. But still, you know, if All Might had walked in the UA in front of all those civilians, right? The former number one hero, you know, maybe it would have made things a little bit easier. You know, if he had said something in front of the civilians about Deku's journey and what's going on. Maybe the civilians would have been quicker to accept Deku, you know, into UA, you know, because remember, it took a good three chapters for the civilians to finally let Deku in. You, maybe it would have been two or one if All Might had, you know, went in at the beginning, but he just didn't have the courage because he felt so defeated. So... Uh, Stain then jumps towards All Might as if he was going to attack him, but he wasn't going to attack him. He actually uh, pulls him out of the front of the statue because he sees a woman co uh, coming. He, you know, they both hide and he tells All, to, All Might to watch. So the woman that comes in front of the statue is the one that All Might saved in Camino. You guys will recognize this. It's kind of ironic because it's kind of, if you guys remember a couple chapters ago, we saw that the girl Deku saved from the civilians earlier in this arc you know now uh we saw that that girl came to deku's aid when deku was dealing with the civilians along with koto now we're now we're seeing all might a, a, a female that all might say that kamino now she's coming you know just to clean all Might statue she's not there to talk to all might directly but you could kind of see the parallels here right you know people that deku and all might have saved along their journeys and past battles in the story you know they're having an impact now in this crucial moment as both characters are going through you know crises so uh we see that uh, the, the, the woman, she takes off the sign. There's a sign on the statue that says, I am not here. And you can tell, like, you know, this is a very big, you know, uh, symbol of how the country is, you know, post the war arc, right? The sign says, I am not here. And people feel so defeated after what's happened. And they know All Might's no longer there to fight for them. Right. You know, the civilians are just depressed 
So the fact that someone put a sign saying, I'm not here, really shows, you know, the state of Japan post-war arc. Everybody's going through, you know, uh, trying times. So we see her start to clean the statue. And Stain says that what defined All Might was his smile and his courage, not his power. And that this is the only version of All Might he can accept. So Stain is saying here, like, I'm not going to accept this version of All Might, this depressed, you know, All Might that doesn't know who he is, that is down about everything, that is, you know, saying that everything that he did as a hero doesn't matter now because, you know, he can't do anything. And that's part of the reason why, you know, the country is in the state that it is. Like Stain saying, I'm not accepting this version. I want the All Might, even though All Might doesn't have his quirk anymore i want the all might that would smile and persevere and you know be courageous no matter what circumstances he was in because that was the all might that inspired me so he says uh that the current state is not the end result of his efforts at all but they but they are still it uh but they are still in the middle part of a process so stain is like this is not the end game you know yes things look bad now and it's, it's almost like the the author and the people writing the manga it's like they're telling you like this is the middle of the story you know there there is light at the end of the tunnel you know like this is like this is not the end result and we 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 saw it last chapter as well at the end where they the the narrator changed because we all know you know they say all the time you know my academia is the story of deku becoming the number one hero but they changed the last chapter saying that you know this is a story of how they all everyone in class 1a becomes the greatest heroes you know like we're in the middle part of that story you know we're at you know uh the climax here and then everything's just gonna get more and more crazy but you know we we believe that at the end here that class 1a and the heroes will prevail and there will be a brighter day for the heroes for class 1a for all the civilians and there'll be a future where everyone can smile and be happy once again so the fact that Staten recognizes that it's basically just a message from the author like keep reading keep reading things will eventually get better uh, so Stain also says that the embers left by All Might have not been blown out by even the strongest of winds, but they have been passed on to a group of people who have turned them into a huge fire that continues to grow. Stain is talking about Class 1A, right? You know, because All Might not only inspired Deku, but he also inspired all of Class 1A, and they are fighting for a brighter day for everyone. So All Might begins to cry as he watches the lady, and remember this is very symbolic to what we just saw with deku right as ochako was given the speech you know we saw deku start to cry and now now here we have all might starting to cry you know because now deku and all might are recognizing that you know this is not the end you know yes they have to do things differently and they have to continue to grow and that's the only way that they're gonna get to a point where they can have a chance against the league of villains but you know, the fact that, you know, you have like these characters like Kodo and uh, the ladies that All Might and Deku saved and you have all these other characters. The fact that they're crying, those are huge parallels, huge parallels. So I kind of like the parallel here. So as you know, All Might is crying. Stain then says that he is unable to recognize All Might uh, in that person right now. But if he really is the true hero he so admires, he should use the information Stain obtained on Tartarus and kill him, putting an end to the hero killer. So we see that Stain throws a knife on the ground near All Might, containing a piece of paper with this information he talked about. And remember, this is another big Easter egg. Remember, way back uh, in the early arcs of My Hero Academia, where Stain gives that speech in front of Deku and Gran Torino and everybody during the uh, first internship arc. Remember, Stain says that the only person that he would allow to kill him was All Might. That was the only person he would ever allow to kill him. And now here we are, you know, all the way uh now in this part of the story so much time has passed so, you know Stain still has that same ideology he's like the only person that you know that he will allow to kill him and end him is all might so we see Stain. he puts the knife on the ground near all might and has a piece of paper with this information and i'm willing to bet i'm willing to bet it's not confirmed but i'm willing to bet you know that this information has a lot to do with the league of villains and 
you know, possibly where All for One and Shigaraki are. Because remember, Deku and the rest of the heroes have no clue where they are. No clue. Even though, you know, Deku has been attacked by a uh, villain sent by uh, All for One, Light Lady Nag. Uh, I'm forgetting her name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Lady Nagme and a couple others. But they still have not been able to get any information. This is where I think things are going to start turning around. And I'll talk about this in just a moment. But the chapter finishes up. He, you know, uh, Stain says by uh, Stain says he finishes by saying that this is all for the sake of a more just society. And we see that All Might is still crying. And then the chapter ends with the girl looking at the sky and realize that the rain is stopping. So a lot of symbolism here in this chapter. So the rain stopping. And remember, the rain's been going on for a while. It was going on with the battle with Deku in Class 1A. It was going on while Deku returned uh, to UA. You know, it was going on when Deku left All Might. You know, the rain's been going on for a while. But this is a huge turning point, right? So what I believe is going to happen, I, All Might's not going to kill the hero killer. I don't think he's going to kill him at all. Something else will probably happen, but I don't think All Might, like, come on, All Might's not going to kill the hero killer, you know? But whatever happens, clearly I think All Might's going to take this information, whatever's on that paper, and I believe probably on that paper there's information about the League of Villains and possibly where All for One or Shigaraki is, right? We'll get some kind of direction. You know, some kind of clue. And then All Might's going to be able to take this information to Deku and the other and the rest of Class 1A who are at UA, right? And then they can finally start coming up with some kind of plan to go after the League of Villains, right? Go after Shigaraki and go for All for One. Because the rain stopping, right? It's like we're nearing the end of this part of the story. And now we're starting to head towards another part of the story where, you know, the hero's counterattack finally begins. We could be heading towards another war. That's what we could be heading towards. We could be heading towards a huge final battle. But we are with the rain stopping here and all my getting this new information, whatever it is. This tells me that we are heading towards a new part of the story. And... The heroes could be starting to get their revenge. You know, Deku finally back with Class 1A and everyone working together. You know, I feel like we are nearing a new part of the story where, you know, things are going to get even more and more crazy. But, you know, the heroes will finally be able to make a counterattack, which they haven't been able to do for a while because the League of Villains have been off the map. So this is this is very very exciting stuff. I did love this chapter. I love the slow pace. You know, just just looking at the paces of all this dialogue here. You know, no matter if it's Deku talking with Class One A or Deku talking with the civilians or All Might talking with the hero killer, they're taking their a lot of time with this story, and I have no problem because there's so much they have to get to. There's so many questions, so much character development that needs to be fleshed out, and I'm loving it. This was another great chapter, you know, in what has been a great arc so far. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what happens. But like I said, I don't think All Might's going to kill the hero killer here. But I do think this is going to be, you know, the bridge as we enter the next part of the story. Uh, with Class 1A and Deku going after the League of Villains. But, you know, like I said, this was a great chapter and I'm excited to see what happens what happens next but other than that guys this is about all i got for you guys today like i said great chapter uh let me know what you guys thought of the chapter in the comment section down below give me guys your theory and predictions what's gonna happen here with the hero, the hero killer and all might will somebody else get involved you know what's gonna happen let me know what you guys think give me guys your theories and predictions but if you guys enjoyed the video leave a like on it Hopefully, I'll be back here next week with My Hero Academia Chapter 327 as the story continues to progress. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, especially if you guys are new to the channel. Hit the bell next to my name, Fitzpunk TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video because I got tons of new content coming out on the daily. Also, make sure to follow me on social media. The link to that is in the description down below. Other than that, guys, I'll see you later. Stay safe and happy, y'all.